Hello, wonderful ones. Welcome to Unicorn Light Tarot. I hope everybody is staying safe and sane um, amidst everything that's going on out there. Um, for all of you who are brand new, welcome. Such an honor to have you. And for those of you who are returning also, of course, welcome. Today, I thought what we would do um, to keep our energy levels up and to keep our frequency up and our immune system up, I thought we would check in with the fairy folk, with the elementals, with everybody being in at their houses and a lot of people are on lockdown right now. Um, Mother Nature is actually healing. And for those of you who know, I'm sure most of you do, if you clicked onto this channel, I you know, I presume that you have somewhat of a metaphysical kind of stance or belief system. The elementals look after our forests and the fairies look after our forests and all of our greenery and um they are in full force right now out there in the world just healing everything and um, yeah, just without us out there littering and doing whatever it is that we do, they have full reign over Mother Nature and our beautiful Earth Kingdom here. So I thought we would check in with them. And um, we have four cards here. So these are the four elementals here. Um, you don't know what they are, but uh, we do have um, the first one is Tiger's Eye. And then we have this beautiful moonstone here. Then we have uh, Turquoise and then we have uh, the Clear Quartz Crystal here. And each each represents um, an elemental. And yeah, so that's the four here. And then we will add cards on top of that and get you some messages of support, love, um, practical kind of advice. That's what we do here to keep your energy high and um, your immune system high and definitely your frequency high. And again, you know, these elementals are wonderful because um, when you check in with them, they have this light spirit, this objectivity working on behalf of Mother Nature. So they can definitely give us a viewpoint that I think is much higher than the fear level that's out there. Um, so that's why we're checking in with them today. So Let's get in there, I guess. Um, oh, yeah, I, I keep forgetting to do this and I have to <laughs> have to get in the habit. If you're interested, I would love to have you to subscribe. Um, definitely give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. I love hearing from you guys. If you subscribe and share, this is the best way to get this video out there and all these messages out there. Um, and really, at the end of the day, we do this so we can be there as a support system for you and as many people as possible. So it's important to subscribe. All right, let's get going on the reading. I'm going to put these aside. And so if you picked the pile one or card one or fairy or elemental one, I want to remind everybody that um, whichever uh, card you picked, just um, all the timestamps will be down below. Um, you can always pick as many cards as you want. One or two, the messages should resonate. Um, and if one of the message, messages doesn't resonate, go ahead and pick another one. It probably will. All right, for those of you who picked um, our beautiful grounding stone here, we're going to put this to the side. Let's see which elemental you have. The fire fairy, creative action and optimism. So the fire fairy is working with you. I'm also going to use um, <clears throat> the same cards here. So this is your specific message from your higher self here. Um, and we'll put that with the fire fairy and see what we have. So your specific message is Lady of the Lake, absolute truth, courage, self-respect and responsibility. And the number eight here. So for those of you who picked, I can't say pile one, fairy one, elemental one, um, definitely, um, you know, you actually could have a lot of fire energy around you. For some of you, I actually feel like there's dragon energy around you. You definitely have 
um, are seeing this as an opportunity or you could see this as an opportunity to burn away the old to move into the new. Um, and that's where um, you're being told that your your focus should remain um, on burning away the old and moving into the new, um, taking space for grieving the old life or the old way that we were and moving into a brand new way of being. I feel as though for a lot of you there, there were structures that you didn't really believe in. There was certain elements of like um, society that you didn't believe in anyway. These are crumbling down now. And a lot of you who are already resonating with the brief messages that we've already pulled forward are feeling as though, you know, sort of mixed messages here while you're um, absolutely thrilled that these are all falling, crumbling away. And then we can get to the heart of the matter, which is love and compassion and community. Um, there is a part of you that is grieving for the old because there is an aspect of you that that learned to be who you are and to stand in your strength through the old way of how we were doing. So definitely give yourself some space, pal one or fire fairies out there for grieving the old and bringing in the new. You'll appreciate the new a lot more if you allow space for grieving. Um, the other thing that I want to say for you too, for, for those of you who are normally very creative, um, and usually quite structured in the way that they create. If you're not creating to the volume that you did before, please give yourself a break. You know, when we're, when things are falling away here, um, we have to give ourselves some room in which to allow this falling away in such a way so we, we can concentrate on the strength of what's left. So the way in which you will create in this time, in the specific time period, might be a little bit different. But the way in which you are working, I can tell you, is very specific. Um, you're not working day to day or carving out time in the way that you used to um, in order to get things done. You're working much more um, sort of in your head you're, you, as you're working through these emotions, as you're stepping forward, um, certain absolute truths, universal truths for you are coming very much into fruition. So when you sit down, it's almost like a purging on the page. So don't think for a second that, you know, you're not getting anything done. You're just not working in the same way that you did before. But when you finally do sit down to create, everything will purge. And it's almost like you're catching up with yourself. All of those days that you would have allocated for yourself, but, you know, in the last couple of weeks that you didn't get to, um, will, you know, you, you'll have the same results, but you're just working in a different way. Um, you're definitely working on a higher level and in a completely different level too. Um, the amount of resourcefulness that you have, like like we said at the beginning, the message is for you, you're lightening up and you're burning away the old stuff, which is really icky. That's the word that I'm getting icky. Um, it's sort of mud like it's coming up so you can burn it away um, before you've worked with this and certainly with the shadow self. But you're actually burning away this. So the fire fairy coming in is a sort of it's very kinetic energy moving forward um, and it's pulling you into the optimistic point of view. But you're going to have those dark moments sometimes while you're clearing out. So when you do reach those dark moments, really sit and meditate and you can pull in the fire fairies too. Um, really fire energy, dragon energy, but you know, and certain fairies too. You can definitely look this up online. There's many books out there that works with specifically with elementals, with elements, with fire um, to burn this old away. Please give yourself some space to burn the old away. And for those of you who get a little overwhelmed and wonder, am I going to stay in this space because it feels like depression or some of this anger is coming out because that's the fire energy. No, it's burning away. Give yourself some time to not do anything, but, you know, maybe go in, make yourself something nutritious. Um, definitely sit with your angels, with your fairy folk here, with the fire energy and connect. The best thing that you can do is connect because they can actually help you physically move through, um, move this energy through your body quicker, like fire, like again, burning away, burning out. Um, Let's see what we have. You know, um, your higher self here is um, is getting ready to emerge in sort of a, I wouldn't say a brand new way, um, but to new heights. And this is your lady of the lake, your absolute truth, courage, self-respect and responsibility. So I feel as though on many levels you are able to, to create and be this, be this person for the world. But I feel as though the energy is coming back to you so you can stand in your own absolute truth. I feel as though you allowed a 
lot of other truth to come in, a lot of other people's truth to come in and it melded with yours and it took away some personal power. You're no longer working that way. You were really shedding everything that doesn't work for you anymore. And again, the shedding is very powerful because it's burning away um, from this fire fairy energy. And what is left is this beauty, a uh, beautiful lady of the lake image. I mean, so much power, own version of truth, which of course is um, instrumental to who we are, um, our own power, sense of self-respect and absolute truth. Again, no longer looking um, to the, ac um, the external anymore for any kind of validation whatsoever. Um, moving forward with a sense of truth and light and the people who find you are the people who are supposed to be with you you're no longer um you are definitely a beacon of light for all um but it's you're not concentrating on saving everybody in the way that you did before you're concentrating on saving of being um the self-respecting um product of who you are and shining your light for the entire world so there's a, a huge shift in consciousness um, and you're you're moving definitely moving from the sort of human to the the um, to the higher frequency here um, and this burning away of the old is is really intense for you this is a process that might be at times a little bit uncomfortable but again come back to self um, remind yourself that you are working slightly differently in the world and how you create and for a lot of you are really creative I see a lot of writers out there a lot of painters but a lot of a lot of you are bringing in uh, different types of mediums in order to work. Um, some of you may be working with sort of language or, um, you know, working with, you know, a sense of communication. Um, you're bringing in your own unique truths. Um, and again, these truths um, existed before time. It existed before in different times for you. So you're bringing in sort of old ways, again, of doing things, getting back to sort of ancestral ways, getting back to who you are, the essence of truth to the earth. Um, which, of course, now we need more than ever. Unity. Absolutely. Do the right thing for the right reason. Compare traditional versus new approaches to see what works for you. A spiritually minded community. Absolutely perfect. Could not have picked a better card for you, you fire fairies out there. You're re-establishing how you are working in the world. Now, let's be clear. Before all of this went down, and we know what it is, we don't really want to focus on it, but um, we want to give you information about how to rise above it and see it differently. But before this all went down, a lot of this really wasn't working for you anyway. It was like seven steps backwards, three steps forward, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like that was happening a lot for a lot of um, light workers and empaths and starseeds, which of course, that's who you are. Um, but this new level of sort of intimacy with yourself um, and with your higher knowledge um, and this sort of like just shutting down, pulling down those walls and shutting down what no longer works and being completely honest with yourself about saying, whereas before you, you may have been honest, but there was an aspect of you that felt like it needed to work within the system. Otherwise, you know, are you, are you going to live, you know, um, in the middle of nowhere with your own electricity and this, that and the other? There, there's a part of you that wants that community, but had to work somewhat in the system. But it really didn't work for you. That system is crumbling and you're coming into this understanding of how you can work completely and totally on in your own way with your own truth and your own sense of power without compromise and it's effortless and it's um this is what you've been waiting for so concentrate on that so when the, some of the darkness comes in again the icky the muck it's coming out but you know the the fire that's that's pulling it out and this this new sense of self that's coming through the fire is a very quick way to burn it out so allow this fire to burn out the old Queen of Winter, strong, patient, self-sufficient and funny. Yes, you definitely have a sense of humor, even though it's been maybe you have a little bit of a dark sense of humor, which I totally appreciate. Let go of the people or things that no longer serve you. Now is the time to focus on your career, unmarried or divorced individuals. This is really the unmarried and divorced. It's really... Um, 
about, again, setting those boundaries clear for yourself, what it is that you need, putting yourself first and understanding that that's how you do this. You put yourself first and then everything falls into place. The way in which you're working um, with the physical and the metaphysical is completely different because you are not allowing anything to stand in your way anymore. So this fire energy is fantastic for you. You always knew who you were, but there were several different layers for you to get through to that that sense of justice, that sense of who you were, um, that sense of power. Um, and I feel as though, again, now that sort of things are crumbling and people are coming back to the old ways and the, the sense of, of profound truth, um, you've really gotten to the bottom of who that is for you. And you're taking, again, no compromises. So let's just get one of these. Okay, vulnerability. It's reversed. I'm going to do one more for you, too. I'm feeling this one. Yes. Ceremony invocation. So these are reversed. Now, that's totally fine um, for those of you who are resonating with this, but don't uh, uh, finding a little bit difficult because I am sensing for some of you. Again, this is a general reading, but I am I'm feeling for some of you, um, you're you're feeling the energy of going under a little bit. Really do allow for that energy to burn through you. And remember, um, um, this too shall pass. I want you to remember that that is your message. Also, your vulnerability and your sense of ceremony, what it is that that brings you back to your sense of self. It's really important to recreate that. You have a lot of magic. You know, for those of you who are not magically inclined, it really doesn't matter. Um, cleaning your kitchen with intention, lighting a candle with intention, working with the phases of the moon with intention, working with crystals with intention, whatever it is that you want to pull in um, to to pull in a sense of your magic and to allow this vulnerability that you're feeling, um, because through that vulnerability, you are going to end up with the image of the Lady of the Lake. And that image will finally become who it is that you are. Now, you've always been the Lady of the Lake. You've always had that magic. But you've had to, you know, in your life, you've had to compromise so many times. And you've compromised certain aspects of self. The Earth, Mother Earth, everybody, every single situation, um, who it is that you are is, is asking you to no longer do that. So, all you're doing is pulling away the layers at a much more drastic kind of like energy. Again, you're you're burning away everything. So it feels kind of intense, right? Sometimes, but allow in that vulnerability. Um, allow in that feeling of like not having any power, not having any control. It's going to help you burn through this quicker. So you will be revealed as the lady of the lake. And again, bring back that sense of magic for those of you who used to have it in your life and it's, you know, you, you don't have the energy for it. Again, simplify everything. You know, one thing that you need to do. And remember, when you're in that depth of darkness, it that too shall pass. But get back into your fairy guides and definitely reach out for that fire energy to help burn through this energy quicker so you can get back to the Lady of the Lake. And for those of you who are having some physical symptoms of burning through, that's just all of this energy, this emotionality that you've kept within your body releasing. It's again, these are just symptoms that are going through your body. So a sense of unity, a sense of a supreme balance, a sense of self-acceptance on your own terms, no more compromises, um, burning through the old, lifting that veil, getting back to your own sense of truth, again, with no consequences. If the darkness comes in, that too shall pass. You must allow that vulnerability so it can move through your system. So you will be revealed as this person that you always were, but without those compromises, again, no longer working with the external anymore in the world. This is all internal healing. So when when the external comes in or tries to sort of seep in, you'll be able to say, no, absolutely not. You are re- calibrating everything that's internal for you, you, fa um, you fire fairies, and everything will be on your own terms and you're working beyond the ego. So keep everything on a higher place. Um, you know, all of your thoughts, do whatever you can. If the darkness comes in again, do not worry. Just connect with your fire fairy energy and allow that just to move through you and get back to your own sense of ceremony. Again, keep it simple and this too shall pass. 
So do let me know if this resonated. I love to hear from you in the comments. Again, subscribe, share, um, give me a thumbs up. Love to hear from you. And until we meet again, you fire fairies, you, you take care. Bye-bye. Okay, fairies number two. I'm going to move this because this is from number one. There. Give me a minute here. I have to get organized. Forgive me. Fairies number two. So if you chose the moonstone working with the moon and uh, the balancing, uh, balancing, recalibrating of energy and emotions, that's where you are. Let's see. Oh my goodness. I promise you, I did not know. This is all random for me. The water fairy feelings and emotions. So for all you beautiful uh, water fairies out there, now you could be a water sign, um, but I feel as though it's more about or have a lot of water in your chart. For you, it's really about um, really working with your emotions and seeing them as ultimate power. I feel as though most of you who have chosen uh, the water fairies are intense empaths and you've struggled with this a good portion of your life. And that is totally natural. Let's see what your higher self, we're going to calibrate all of this. Let's see what your higher self um, has to say too. Let's bring this in. I'm feeling this one for you. Merlin, alchemy, justice, balance. Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect card for you, water fairies. You are alchemists. You are here to shine the light on alchemy, transferring the dark on the old into love, transferring fear into love. Don't think for a second that you cannot do this. The way in which you will do this, water fairies, is to really embrace your vulnerability, embrace your emotions. A lot of you shut them out or shut them down. Um, because they've been very overwhelming for you. The way in which you work in the world, the, the way in which your empathic uh, version of self works is really intense. You're probably, there's different versions of empaths and there's one, you can look it up on the internet and I think they have them on YouTube too. There's one empath that's really, really intense and they're usually star seeds. Um, they usually come from Palladian um, energy. Um, and if you don't feel... Um, sort of a, if you don't feel an intense connection um, with the star seed sort of, you know, quote unquote, uh, label, then Palladian energy will definitely help you. You can still connect with them. Intense, regardless, intense, intense, intense empaths. And I absolutely feel for you because I'm one of them too. It's been very difficult for you to be out in the world. Some of you may have had some sort of isolation. And even though we are in shutdown and isolation, that aspect for you might be driving you a little bit mad, but a lot less mad than other people because you know how to do it. Um, I don't think you're naturally in introverted. You're actually very animated around uh, the right kind of people, the people that you feel really comfortable with. And you're known for that too. Um, but your introversion comes from the fact that you, you, you often, or you have done in the past, often run from situations because you are overwhelmed with so much energy with people and, and circumstances and environments, and you didn't know how to handle it. Um, this is an express, beautiful energy for you to handle. Um, some of you saw emotions as vulnerability um, or um, sort of chased the emotions down, down. You could have dumbed them down a little bit or just didn't deal with them. Um, they would have ruptured up at some times, maybe, uh, you know, at the wrong place at the wrong time. But they always, always came up at a certain time because you were dumbing them down. This is a beautiful time. You should also work with, and if you can, wear... Um, the moonstone because it's balancing energy and working with the moon. Um, and that's definitely moonlight would be good for you working with the phases of the moon too. But here we have five of summer. Trust that there is a reason for everything that happens. Remove yourself from the negative emotions of others. Oh my goodness. Focus on focusing on that, which frightens or worries you. Okay. So this is definitely a really, really beautiful time for you to get those, um, emotions, 
sort of, how do we say this, integrated. Um, the first thing that needs to be done is you need to build a new relationship with your emotions and know that it's your emotionality that makes you powerful. For those of you who do not believe or did not trust that your emotionality, or you were even maybe shamed for being too emotional at times, maybe when you were younger, um, I can tell you that your magic and your power comes from your emotionality. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, um, have they been integrated? Do you use them in a powerful way right now? Not quite, but you're working on that balance. This is what specifically you are here to do right now. Um, this is a time for you to use your emotionality and your emotions for the benefit of not just yourself, but um, but for mankind. Now, I know that some of you um, can get overwhelmed with your emotions and then you go down this sort of rabbit hole of, of concentrating on the negative and then, oh my God, this will happen, this will happen. And then you convince yourself it's going to happen, the negative, and then you sort of like you run your mind, right? Now, let's point out the power in this. Okay, you're focusing on the negative and the negative that you're focusing on never really truly happens, but there's a part of you that really does believe that it could happen. And here's why. Your mind is so extreme extremely powerful, your alchemist. So there's a point in your heart that when you start going down that loophole of, or that, that rabbit hole, I should say, down, down, down um, with the negativity, um, there's a part of you that gets freaked out, freaked out because you genuinely believe that you might bring this negativity to fruition. And there's a reason why, because you know you have that power. You know you can do that. Now, if you turn all of that negative thought and, and, and focus on the positive, you will be able to bring everything that you want into fruition. So you getting yourself like really, really head up and really, really sort of uh, scared, sometimes even paranoia sets in um, because you're focusing on the negative and you're putting so much energy and power on that. You think it's actually going to happen. That's just your system telling you how powerful you are now. Take away, obviously, any energy from that from that negativity and, and put it onto um, the, the power that you have with the positive. And the best way to do that is to really allow your emotions to take hold. Now, I know you're not going to like this, but you need to really ground into the energy and the knowledge, knowing that you are alchemists. So you have, and you've done this in many lifetimes before. So if this is resonating with you, water fairies, then my goodness, you know you can do this. You know you're extremely powerful. You were here not only to do this for yourself, but to do it for mankind and teach people how to do it. You know how to take base fear and turn it into love. Now you have to start doing it for yourself. And the way in which you will do this is that you will, you will have to allow your emotions in fully. And when you allow your emotions in fully, because it's something that you don't really allow, when your emotions come in, you get overwhelmed, you try to dumb them down, you try to run away from them, maybe you have a glass of wine, maybe you do this, maybe you do that. None of that's working for you or you've done that in the past. It's not working for you anymore. You've got to let those emotions in. You've got to see where they're coming from. There's messages attached, attached to those emotions. And once you realize where it's coming from, you can integrate them and move forward. And then when you're on the other end of that, you'll go, oh, that wasn't so bad. And when you continue to do that, you realize that there's no power in the emotions. The power Power comes from who you are. The emotions are just letting you know what work needs to be done. You will no longer be overwhelmed by them. So this is your balance. This is your this is your 101 getting back into your alchemy roots. Okay. So let's choose another one here. Seven of summer. No more procrast uh, procrastinating. Your power comes from making a decision. A confusion that arises from overanalyzing the options. Yes. Again, emotions do not need to be overanalyzed. They are what they are. Allow them in. Allow them to give you a message and allow them to get the F out. That's very simple. You're giving them too much power. They are a symptom of something, but they don't need to override you the way that they have been. There is no time to waste here with the, uh, not that you're procrastinating, you're not, but this is the right time for you to learn how to balance with your emotion. And it comes from realizing too, I just, I want to reiterate your emotion, uh, your emotionality and your extreme emotionality, your extreme empath is your power. There's no point in running away from it. These emotions 
emotions are not going to go anywhere. You'll always be working with your emotionality. That's how you're going to bring it. You're going to be able to bring in your um, emotions into your alchemical process once you learn how to deal with them and how to balance with them. I promise you, you're a lot more balanced than you think you are. All right, what have we got here? Wake up call. Okay, you already know that this is going on. You already know that you are ready for the Merlin alchemy, justice and balance. You also, this is number one here. You also know that there is extreme power in who you are. You've not always been to, uh, able to access it. And this has been very frustrating for you. You've seen that power. You know you have it. You've even used it against yourself. I would say water fairies time and time again. You no longer ask to do this. Work in a different way. Allow that vulnerability in. You have a safe space in which to do this. You do have... Uh, you do have your crew, you do have your tribe, you do have people that you can turn to and be vulnerable with. Most of you do. Now, they will maybe a small number of people, but that's fine. Um, you're not the only one who's working on this and you will be able to teach people how to do this. You absolutely know how to do it. It is instinctive. You are the one that are getting in your own way. You see this power, you sense this power within you um, now it's, it's, you're ready to access it. So your wake up call is already here. I feel like it was here before any of this went down. You already realized that this was going to happen for you. I'm going to put this underneath. I don't want to cover up your Merlin. Um, you also have, um, sort of the, the masculine and feminine side um, that you are balancing out properly too. The Merlin is definitely the masculine, but the sense of magic is coming in with the, the divine feminine. Um, really allowing that divine feminine to come in and do what she does best. I and mean, this is not about gender. This is just who we are. Allow what she does to come in. She allows everything water to just, um, you know, literally just uh, wash over her. Allow that. There's your masculine sense of self that's coming in and trying to control that. So the balance comes from allowing your feeling and emotions. They are giving you succinct messages, getting back to that alchemy, not using that power that you have against yourself. And don't overanalyze everything. Don't go down that rabbit hole. If you do get into that rabbit hole of the negativity and then you're like, oh my God, I have so much power. This negativity might happen, da, 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 da. Even to the point where some of you might even have like, not panic attacks, but like really get yourself into a bit of a state there. Just stop it. Stop it. Just get out of your head and say, this isn't working. Stop. Don't. Just get out and just say, I know you have a message for me, emotion. I'm going to take a couple of deep breaths. I'm going to ask you what that is. And I'm going to connect to the message immediately. Connect to your water fairies. They will help you wear your moonstone or hold your moonstone when you ask the question. And I promise you, that emotion will reveal immediately what it is that they want you to look at and integrate. And once you come out on the other side of dealing with that emotion, you'll get right into that alchemy process that you were born to do, not only do, but master and teach. And you will be working with a brand new sense of power, a brand new sense of balance. And this is something that you've been leading up to. So don't think for a second that this process is going to take years. We're talking about days, if not immediately. You have got this, water fairies. This is your time to use your emotions for you and become that powerful sense of self that you've not only seen and sensed, but will be forevermore. Okay water fairies out there. If this resonated, do let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe. Share the video so we can get this message out there. And until we meet again, you take care, you beautiful water fairies. Bye-bye. Okay, my dears, for those of you who chose the turquoise, your elemental fairy energy is earth fairy. Physical health grounding and foundations. Yes, absolutely. Reworking those. What do they mean for you? What is important to you? What did you give um, energy to before that no longer serves a purpose? We're also going to check in with your higher self here um, and get you some messages from your higher self to go with your beautiful earth angel. The novice, innocence, beginner. 
ignorance, new skill without practice, unstable curiosity. This is actually a beautiful card in so far as this is your brand new beginning. You really are working with what is working for you, what didn't work for you, how do I ground. The way in which your connection with your physical environment, even with your grounding, the way in which you ground is shifting and changing for the better. Um, for those of you who are working with or have worked with um, the inner child coming back with a sense of innocence, um, there was a part of you um, that used your earthy sense with your earth fairy angel here, your earth fairy, um, but you use that in a way to stay sort of some of you, again, this is a general reading, some of you weren't grounded enough and some of you were, you were earthy, very earthy, but not grounded. Um, and that, that sense of practicality came in and it was sort of, it had you on a sort of a, I'm being told a one note, if that makes sense. Um, so instead of having a full symphony, you had a one or two note. You can't, couldn't make the song, if that makes sense. Um, it's not really the wording that I would use. But again, you know, these are channeled messages. So it's um, it's recalibrating your environment, recalibrating um, your innocence, your sense of brand new beginnings. Again, chucking out, literally chucking out what doesn't work. Um, you know, mind frames, things that don't work, um, how it is that you saw people. For those of you who had, you know, judgments about others, um, you use that as a sense of protection because you had a judgment about yourself. And the reason why you had a judgment about yourself is that you weren't fully open to the sort of joy and the innocence. You may have worked with your inner child um, many times, but you didn't integrate your inner child in a way that they had sort of a free for all all, they were always there, uh, fully integrated. This is a time for you to integrate the innocence and the inner child in a beautiful way. And then the, the level of the way in which you will be working in the world will no longer be one or two notes. It will be, again, a full symphony. For those of you who felt like they were missing out or um, not really sort of living the life they wanted, it may sound a little intense, but we don't mean it intensely, but not living the life that they wanted, not making the choices that they really wanted, maybe settling. This is a way for you to recalibrate and rework. Um, again, really examine what it is that you want. And just this is going to be a quick understanding and chucking out again what doesn't work. Um, those judgments that you have for yourself and others will also be chucked out. They will no longer be needed as a way to protect oneself. The Empress, yes. Take time, time, uh, sorry, time to take action. The power of creativity, success that allows for a luxury of life. This is a way for you to choose the life that you've always wanted. Now, if there were elements of your life that you chose and that you loved, um, you know how to do this, but you have the chance to do this in all aspects and in all areas of your life. It's a very exciting time. Now, I feel as though for you, um, you've never really had a, a you know, you go through phases where you have no problem with action. Um, I, I don't feel as though there's any kind of procrastination on your part, but you've not always taken divine action. Sometimes there's been action what you think you should be doing. Um, even if you've had like a sort of a goal, you're very practical, practical about how you get there. Now, this is going to sound really, really strange for you earth fairies here, but we're going to take in this beauty here and the messages from the turquoise, but I'm going to say it anyway. We're, we're telling you that the practical way for you isn't going to work in this lifetime. It just isn't. Now, there's a practical sense of self. You take, you know, the first person to take care of everything. You're the first person um, to be there for other people, hand around the shoulder, making sure everybody's okay. You're not going to change that part of yourself, and we're not asking you to do that, but we're asking you to live from your heart. Now, there's aspects of yourself, you know, um, that you do, and you'll do that, and you'll even advise others to live from their heart, but you haven't done that consistently. Um, and this is something that to simplify your life, again, chuck out what doesn't really work anymore um, and to live from your heart. Now, you have a lot of power and you're very when you're grounded, there's nothing you can't do. You have what it takes if only you believe in yourself. Yes. Thinking that you're powerless when you are not a lack of self-confidence that keeps you from getting what you want. Now, the reason why this is happening, this is a very 
very sort of specific way that you work is that you move forward in a very practical way. You don't really get what you want or it looks really different or you do get what you want. You realize you didn't want it. And then you lose a little bit of trust and faith in the universe. And this is something that you do. Um, now, if you live with your if you live and create from your heart and ask from your heart space, what happens is, you know, you can just do a baby step forward. The universe piles in immediately and zooms you forward. Um, and that's exactly what you can do. You're being asked to not live from that practical space anymore. You're being asked to live and to make your decisions from the heart space 100%. Now your inner child can help you do that. Your inner child is exactly the energy that you you need. Now you can start real simple, right? When you get up in the morning, regardless of whether you're in lockdown, I want you to have some fun, earth fairies, earth angels. I want you to have some fun. I want you to get ready. I want you to allow <laughs> your inner child to dress you. Absolutely. Put on makeup, whatever they want to wear. Even if you think it's ridiculous, even if you're moving from the bedroom to the living room to sit down to watch Netflix. I don't care. I want you to allow your inner child to really just go for it. That's what I want you to do. You know, I want you to approach everything simply from the innocence of the inner child and see, calibrate how your energy shifts, how much lighter you feel. And then after you've done that a couple of times and you've given your inner child um, a little room to integrate and a little room, a little bit of freedom, right? Then start asking yourself these, these questions. What do I really want? How can I get there? And then once you're used to being in that sort of innocent mindset, um, you'll see that the the connection that you have with your heart and your angels to get you there quicker will be right there. And any of those negative thoughts or those feelings of I won't get what I want will dissipate because you're working completely differently. You're working with an inclusion aspect of your inner self, of your inner child that brings back the innocence. And you're not working from that practical sense of self anymore. You're working from a sense of higher being from your heartfelt space. Um, there's nothing wrong with being earthy. You're very earthy, but unless you're grounded into a sense of who you really are, that earthiness only goes so far to help you out. What do we have here? Lotus flower, you are unfolding. That's how you felt before. A reminder, the lotus flower grows in mud. For those of you you can be very hard on yourself because you've been going through this process, you beautiful earth fairies, trying to figure out why you're not exactly where you should be right now. You do have lofty goals. There are certain things that you want in this lifetime. There's nothing that says that you cannot get it. The way in which you are going about it, though, is, is that practical sort of too earthy, you know, just allow yourself like some, excuse me, sorry some room to to breathe and see what you really want. Get out there in nature, listen to the birds, work with third eye too. Um, when you allow your third eye to give you messages, for those of you um, who don't have an um, open third eye, you can go ahead and do meditation. I think most of you are, you probably have very vivid dreams. Your third eye is coming out with messages many times. Um, maybe you don't trust them. Third eye, throat, um, and moving down to the to the heart chakra. These are the three chakras I want you to concentrate on here. Um, for those of you who do have an open third eye, I'm seeing a lot of crows. I'm seeing a lot of raven, which means magic is coming in. Just dust off your third eye and work with that, that chakra um, in meditation and get back to a sense of who you are. Again, it's wonderful to be earthy. Um, we want you grounded in a new sense of self. Um, and once you start moving out of the sort of practical way of moving forward, you'll see that mountains seemingly move and everything that you've been asking for comes to you effortlessly. And honestly, the best thing for you, um, what you'll notice is that you won't even have to ask what it is that you wanted will just come into your sort of existence. You'll just, you'll pull it in to your frame of mind. You'll pull it into your actual earth body, into your actual like existence, into your timeline. And then you'll be like, oh, I've gotten this wait, I did want this. That's amazing. So much less effort doing it this way by 
accepting that you're powerful, but accepting that you can't do everything on your own. Again, it's not about control. It's about alignment. Sometimes you mix that up with your earthy sense of self. Um, for those of you who are too earthy, you know, get out there and get some air, get, you know, get some air energy. That's why getting back into that innocence, that beautiful childlike spirit, um, let them dress you up. Let them <laughs> work with them in a really unique way. What do they want to watch on Netflix? What do they want to read? And don't vet them when they, you know, if they want to, if they want to watch Toy Story 2, that's what you're watching. Oh, no, no, I want to watch like, you know, this, that, and the other. Scrubs. No, let them watch that. Learn to get back into that energy and integrate that inner child. And once you're in that mood sense as, as a practical way of doing this, because I know this is how your mind works. You like practical ways of moving forward. Once you're used to integrating the inner child on a certain level, that's when you start asking from your heart space. What do I want? What do I want? What do I need? And if you're all, if you're in any way overwhelmed by the day to day, how do I get there? All you have to do is speak to your earth fairies, speak to your earth angels, speak to your guides and say, what it is, what do I need to do that's for the best, that's for the glory of mother nature? What it is that I'm supposed to do for everyone? How can I be of service to the universe? Use everything that I am and who I have been incarnated in this earth. How can I be of best use? Concentrate on that. Sometimes I feel like you get lost in the details and then you get wrapped up in this how to move forward, how to move forward. And you end up moving sideways instead of forward. So remember, you have the confidence to do this. You have the balance and the time to move through, allow in this innocence, work from that heart space and get back that power and action. Work in that action very, very differently. And for those of you who are too earthy and too practical, remember, it's not about control. It's about alignment. We want you to have the easiest life possible. You know, you want something, you put it out into your mind and it comes straight into your existence within a couple of hours. This is not a crazy way to live. People live like this. Absolutely. And you can too, by living through the heart space and trusting that heart space, knowing that the way that you worked before only worked maybe 50% at best. And even that 50% took way too much effort. You don't need to put that much effort into getting what you want. And remember, if you ever get overwhelmed with the details, just ask the universe how you can be of service and get back into that heart space, integrate that beautiful inner child and move forward in a brand new way into this power of the Empress. You can do that. Three, two, this is community. You're doing this for the service of others. Three is community, bringing people together. You will be able to teach this too. You will be able to be a beacon of light for others once you get the system down. And once it starts working, you'll see that it's a continued sort of success. And that with your practical mind will be like, oh, this does work. But this is how you get there. Practical, practical ways of how you to get there. So for you beautiful earth fairies, do feel free to give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments, subscribe, share the video. That's how we get out there and give more support to more people. And until we meet again, you take care now. Bye-bye. All right, you beautiful ones. For those of you who picked the clear quartz, we have your elemental, the wind fairy, thoughts, words, intellect, intellectual analysis. So this is about communication for you, um, how you communicate, what it is that you want to communicate, how your communication did not reach far enough last time before this all happened, how you can balance your communication, how your communication can come from the heart, and not the ego. Um, and how your heartfelt communication can work in favor for yourself, how you can communicate with yourself in a way that's beautiful and not harsh. So let's see what your higher realm, your higher self is telling you. This is who you are when you take everything, all the negativity and everything that isn't working away. So high priestess. Well, hello. Um, discernment, persistence, prophecy, vision. So we have here 
um, you have a preciseness about you. You have um, vision. There's nothing that you cannot do and bring into your realm. Um, and your communication is exemplary. I think for most of you, I'm feeling um, writing. Um, I'm feeling as though the writing specifically, for those of you who are creative writers, your writing is about bringing back everybody or bringing back aspects of self so you become whole um it's it's about bringing back your power or searching for your power you have a very beautiful sense of magic that's very powerful you're the sort of person that can walk into a room and people notice and you haven't even said anything yet um the way in which you communicate is unique now i know in times that has somewhat gone against you because of your power in the past, people have been quite intimidated by you. And you took that upon yourself as, um, you know, you, you never want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. That is shifting now because you're getting to the point where your confidence is coming in. And if people are uncomfortable around you, that's just that's just the way it is. But this you took to heart. You're a very sensitive soul. Um, you do have an element of self that, you know, if somebody messes with you and they, you know, they've really pushed your buttons, you will push back. You have those boundaries, but those boundaries take a while for you to protect. Um, but having said that, um, when it comes for justice or for others, you definitely protect like your family and and your others. It's not like you're not able to stand up for yourself and others, but you have a very sensitive soul. You have a very sensitive heart and you've, you've been aware of the effect your power has on others. And I feel as though there's a part of you, different instances, different parts of you shut down because you didn't want to make people uncomfortable. This is really you moving into a brand new sense of self. Um, and the way in which you're doing that is you're taking your unique way, the way in which you communicate is profound. It's beyond profound. You can, um, I can give you an example. I'm being shown this. Um, I don't know if you ever had to do this at school, but, um, you know, you're given a paragraph and then you're being asked to um, rewrite the paragraph in a more uh, powerful way with bringing up all the more succinct points and rewrite it. You know, it's a writing exercise. You would be able to do that, reframe anybody else's work and make it absolutely brilliant, poignant, where people will be like, huh, you know, you would be a great editor. Again, you would be a great writer. I mean, as an editor, you would actually sort of be changing people's work. But I mean, in a way that because the way in which you communicate is so vastly unique to other people, um, you know, you would be changing other people's work and it would really just become yours. So you would be better suited, probably. I think even though you may have dabbled with editing, you would, you know, getting your own work out there would be, be the best way to do this. Now, for those of you who are creative in a different way, you are thinking about writing but don't have the confidence to do it. This is definitely confirmation please put this down on paper. This is a perfect thing for you to put down on paper. And again, if you don't know exactly what to put down on paper um, or what to write about, it really is about bringing in all aspects of self and creating a whole grounded individual um, and how that manifests or how that is seen for you, how you understand that um, is completely up to you. But that's really what you'll be dealing with. And that's exactly what it is that you're here to do to become whole, show people how to return back to magic and back to power and to articulate truth um, without second guessing themselves. So this is a new sense of power for you. Um, and I want to be clear, it's not like you've come to the point where you're like, oh, you know, who cares? I don't care about anybody else. I don't care what they think of me. It's not really that. It's just your sense of power is becoming center stage and everything else is falling away. So it's a little bit different than that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being like pushed to the edge and saying, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm done. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel as though for many of you, it's more about standing in that power and stepping into that power and just watching it fall away. It's sort of the opposite. Ten of winter, the resolution of difficulties. Yes. The weight lifted off your shoulders is the end of an addiction of codependency. Yes, your addiction and codependency is wanting either people to like you or wanting everybody to be okay. You've realized that, that you cannot do that. 
You cannot save the world. What you can do is stand in your own light and stand in your own power and articulate the way in which you want to articulate yourself and the right people will find you. You absolutely have integrated that knowledge in such a supreme way, I would say, in the last two weeks. Um, And this is about your power, finding that place, um, a power for you. Your thoughts and words actually can change people's lives. And it may sound intense, but it really isn't. Again, the way in which you communicate is extremely powerful and somewhat rare. Um, The sun, oh my goodness. Plans that work out perfectly. Amazing ideas that lead to rewards and and commendations. Um, Gratitude for the blessings of life. Yes, you are realizing that none of this worked for you. This is your new sense of power. And it comes with this sort of ease and effortlessness, which is beautiful. Um, You've you've done things the other way. You've you've let too many people's opinions of you um, dumb down your sense of purpose and dumb down the way in which you communicate. Um, And you're no longer doing that. It's a really exciting time for you. You're literally shining um, in a way that you haven't before. You know, when you look in the mirror, you may even see like, you know, I'm I'm not even exaggerating, like your eyes are clear. Um, For those of you, you may feel a little um, weightlessness. Maybe you're losing a little bit of weight. Um, Be healthy and strong. and but it's it's more about like the weight has been lifted off your shoulders and you're going to be able to see that in your physical body. Um, you're going to be able to see that in the brightness of your smile. You're no longer taking on the opinions of others. You're no longer taking on um the responsibility, that heavy weight of, of, of having it all on your shoulders. Um, you do understand that the way in which you're communicating is, is not only powerful, but it also shines a light on others who communicate in a similar way. You really understand for the first time, I feel like intrinsically in your bones, in every cell in your body, that you're not alone. Whatever has happened in the last couple of weeks, I know it's been very extreme, but I can assure you that what it's done for you is it's realized for you um, intrinsically what's important and community and you've realized who you have and how far you've come and for most of you who chose the wind fairy you've realized that you you've you've swam so many oceans you've been through so much you you've you've been eight or nine different people this happens a lot but for those of you who are looking back and are embarrassed about certain people that you were that you know how you acted two years ago oh my god I can't believe I did that that's brilliant that's how quickly you've transformed and changed and grown um not many people do feel that you know your sense of of growth has accelerated in the last I would say 10 years five years even but particularly in the last maybe six months to a year you know so this last portion of who you are to bring in the old knowledge and to be free. You see, you put up the limitations for yourself because you you wanted to ease into this. You felt like you needed to ease into whatever it is that you wanted to say. There's no easing into it. You don't need to ease into it. You know, whatever you say is profound and beautiful. The right people will find you. And if people don't like what you say, literally let them go. There's nothing for you to worry about anymore. Um, This is just a really beautiful, powerful time for you. Um, Release. Yeah, this is something that you've not wanted to do. You felt the responsibility for absolutely everybody. You took your sense of responsibility, can we say, a little bit too far. You wanted everybody to be okay. And there's nothing wrong with that intrinsically, but you use that energy against yourself. And what you did is you shut down certain parts of yourself. You vetoed yourself. Um, You always sort of, you you had yourself sort of just a little bit behind the curtain. You popped your head out and said whatever you needed to in safe spaces. And then you went behind the curtain. This is absolutely your time to shine. Um, This is not your time um, to to be wary of what you're saying. Everything comes from a universal truth with you. Um, 
and the release of this is a long time coming. So we are going to, and look at these trees going up into the light. This is all of your past. I don't even mean past lives. These are all of the people that you were in this lifetime. They're now all coming together and shining and growing toward the light. Release all of that need to take everything on your shoulders. And if you feel overwhelmed at any time, it's because you're taking on too much. You're here to communicate your voice, shine a light so your voice can attract other voices. And together we all stand. That's what you're here to do. You're not here to make everybody's life okay. Um, ironically enough, by standing in your power, you make most people's lives okay and you hold space and you do actually shift the energy of the world. But the way in which you were doing it was too literal. Nobody wanted you to be that literal. Too much in your mind, too much overthinking, too much this, too much that. Get back into your heart space. Again, no more vetoing of what you're saying. Always speak from the heart. Just let it all go and the right people will find you. That's that's who you are and that's who you've always been. The sense of prophecy and vision, what you see for the world. You've actually seen the ending. There's so many different timelines playing out right now with everything that's happening, but you've seen the end of this timeline of what it is that's going to happen. There will be harmony. There will be peace. And you using your voice the way that you're using it um, without second guessing yourself, without filtering yourself is the way that we will get there quicker. And the minute you start using your voice without a filter and holding space for your own power, regardless of what others think, that you will you will bring that timeline much quicker to you. So this is absolutely your time to shine. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense, uh, wind fairies, that you chose this cleansing, beautiful stone of cleansing out the old, cleansing out the opinions of others. And there was a time in your life, although you have been working on this, where the opinions of others actually did seep in um, and, and sort of collectively influenced how you believed you are or what you believe you should say to the world. But that's all gone now. Um, your own sense of truth and prophecy. Remember, this is who you are. You've always been this person standing in that high priestess. Look at that face. Does she look like she cares what other people think of her? No, absolutely not. And neither will you. You will bring in this beautiful timeline coming in quicker by no more filtering and just releasing the old. You can absolutely do it now. Um, you have the time and the sense of balance to do this. Um, so don't don't overthink this. Um, for those of you, for all of you overthinkers out there, remember, just speak from the heart. Don't overthink it. You don't need to, uh, you know, vet yourself anymore. Just go for it. Um, again, your truth is the universal truth. You've been working beyond the ego for a really long time. Um, and actually, when you start integrating the opinions of others, that's when you get into the ego because you know, sometimes you get you get angry with or you get hurt by other people that that's when the ego seeps in. If you um, continue to work from your heart space without filtering your voice, your communication will be pure and unique and you won't be you will continue not to work with the ego. So this is a beautiful and powerful time for you. And again, you're not um, you're ready for this. You can absolutely do this. And this is not who you perceive yourself to be. This is who you are. And this is how you can get back there. You're already there. You already have the sun. Um, you're already shining light on this. You're already there. It's just, it's just peeling back the layers so you can pull this version of yourself completely and totally in the now. There's essence of you that has this power. Absolutely. But you're not always able to keep it you know, um, sometimes you, 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 um, as the high priestess aspect of self, you put her behind the curtains to protect her. No need to do that anymore. You're working in a completely different way. So for those of you who are the wind fairy, um, an exciting time for you. I can't wait for you to communicate. Feel free to communicate from your heart down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, um, uh, subscribe and share this video far and wide. Uh, so we can get the message and support and practical beauty out there to everybody who needs it. Um, I want you to take care. I want you to be whoever it is that you were born to be. And until we meet again, Wind Fairies, you take care now. Bye-bye.